So we covered everything about the relational database and uh, we know how to utilize it. And the next step is how to utilize this, uh, uh, what we covered basically. Huh? When we use SQL and those things, how we can actually utilize that in the third party application how, and how we can make an integration of our uh, relational database knowledge with the other programs. So that's about this part, basically. So, so let me give you some example of what are the third party application. So basically, third party application is any other application uh, which is not relational database from the perspective of relational database. So using third party application, it provides additional powerful functionality which is not provided in the relational database like MySQL or Workbench client. So sometimes you may want to utilize those powerful functionality like uh, extra data analysis tools uh, which exist in other software. So if you use it well and if you integrate these tools well, it will increase productivity due to the third party applications, easiness of use, and their powerful um, basically functionality. So some example of third party applications are these things. So something simple is basically Microsoft Excel. So many of you probably are familiar with the Microsoft Excel. It's a simple a spreadsheet program. You can calculate many different information from there. There's also Microsoft Power BI, which is a visualization software. So you get all data, and using the data, you can make many a nice and interactive visualization. So similar tool is also there, which is called a Tableau. And to utilize, uh, so basically you can utilize this third party application, and you can actually connect to the SQL server from these tools to retrieve data into those tools. To do that, you can simply prepare a query uh, which retrieves data from SQL server. And then this, uh, as a result of the query from SQL server, the query results will be sent to the third party application. And then using that data, you can perform data analysis. So that's uh, what usually people do. And also, if you want to do more powerful and more customized process, then you can utilize other programming language, something like Python. So if you use Python, you can actually connect it to an SQL server. And instead of using MySQL Workbench, you can do most of the things in the Python directly. You can directly run query and get the results directly from the server. So what I'm going to do today is uh, uh, it, it will not be on assignment or the test, but I think uh, it will be a good uh, kind of a demo uh, so that in the future, if you have to integrate third party application with a relational database server, you can utilize some code here and you can utilize some examples here. So, first of all, if you want your third party application to connect to your relational database, you need something called a connector. So, different database server will provide a different connector so you can search more detailed examples on that database server's website. Uh, in terms of MySQL, they provide a MySQL connector. So it will provide the connectivity between database and the third party application through the industry standard called ODBC, which is open database connectivity. So you don't need to know too much about that. Uh, but basically, the concept is this. You have a database server, which is a relational database here, for example, MySQL. And this is uh, the third party application you want to use. So in the industry, they made a standard called ODBC so that if you install this ODBC driver or connector, then basically this driver will be able to connect SQL Server to the third party application. So that's uh, what the MySQL connector will do for you. So how to install? There are some steps here so you can basically follow this. Uh, it's very simple. You can just go to the MySQL website and you can download the connector. So if your third party application provide the ODBC connection, you can go to MySQL website and you can download the ODBC connector. So the link is here, you can download it, then you can utilize it. And if you, are, if you want to connect to MySQL server from a Microsoft application in Windows, then they provide a .NET connector. So you can go to the MySQL website and there's a .NET connector. So most of the Windows application from Microsoft will use .NET connector to connect to the MySQL server. So you can download it here from this link. 
if you use Python, there's a connector for Python too. Uh, you, if you want to download manually, you can go here and download it. And there is a manual of how to utilize uh, MySQL in the Python. And there are some examples here, but I'll give you more details later. And when you download the connector, one thing you have to uh, be careful is checking your uh, version of your MySQL. So you can check your MySQL server version uh, on the MySQL workbench. And under help, there is a, if you click about workbench, then there is some information here. So you can check. You have to make sure that the version of your MySQL server matches the connector version. So that's one thing you have to be careful when you download it. So the simplest example is uh, probably utilizing Microsoft Excel. And then uh, we can do this, basically. So the first of all, oh, let me see. So I uploaded this uh, Sakila database on the Blackboard. So we can actually download this uh, Sakila SQL from the Blackboard. And we can create this uh, simple database in our MySQL first to do this. So let me check whether I already did it. Let me open the MySQL workbench. So you can follow this later because, uh, because of the time. Uh, I'll briefly show you how we can do this, actually. Yeah, so in my case, uh, yeah, I already did that step. So I downloaded the sakila.sql file. And if you perform that SQL file on your MySQL workbench, then you will be able to create this Sakila database, as you see here. And it has a, a lot of different tables, but I'm not going to utilize all the tables. I'm only going to utilize three tables, as you see here. So basically, Sakila database is about, uh, it contains information about the movie. And uh, basically, the company Sakila is about, it's the company of renting the DVD to the customer. So it has all the information about the actor, movie, and which actor played in which movie, and who borrowed which uh, DVD or something like that. So I'm going to only focus on these three entity, which is actor entity, film entity, and the assignment relationship between these two. So which actor played in which film, something like that. I'm only going to use this three entity as an example here. So the thing is this. If you want to connect to MySQL from your third-party application, like uh, uh, Microsoft Excel in this case, you can first prepare the SQL query to retrieve information from SQL. So we already talked about how to uh, design different type of SQL. And in this case, what we want to do is this. We want to list the information of each actor together with the related information of films played by that actor. So in that three entity, again, we have information about the actor and which film the actor played. And I want to analyze some information based on that. And I want to retrieve those information and uh, put and use it in the Microsoft Excel. Then we have to bring those information first. To bring those information, we have to design the query. And this query is basically about bringing information about actor and the movie that actor played from the related entity. So you can check this later, but basically, I'm using select statement to retrieve information about actor ID from the actor table, and first name and the last name from the actor table, and title, basically title of the movie, rental rate, and the length of the movie, and replacement cost of that movie, basically the DVD movie. So these blue attributes, actor ID, first name, last name, is stored in the actor table. So I use a from and I specify actor table, and I use inner join to match the information with the information stored in film actor. So film actor is assignment table. So film actor has actor ID from actor table and the film, film table. So we match actor ID to be the same in these two tables, and we use inner join again to match additional information about the film from the film table based on the same film ID. 
So basically, the film actor table, as you see here, is the assignment table, which has actor ID and film ID as primary, composite primary key. So using actor ID, we can match these two tables. And using film ID, we can match these two tables. And we can populate the related information from these three tables by using inner join like this. So I use this code. So, so I copy this code. And then let me test it first, as you see here. So if I go to the MySQL workbench and create new SQL, and copy this here, which creates the code that I'm going to use. So, and then if I perform this query, basically it will give this information. So if you look at closely, basically it gives you it, give, it provides a list of information based on the match between tables. So the actor, Penelope Guinness, played in this movie called Academy Dinosaur. And the rental rate of that DVD is $0.99. The length is 86 minutes. And the cost of that DVD is $21, something like that. And the Penelope Guinness also played in another movie called Anaconda Confession. And the rental rate is like this, length is like this, like that. So basically, for each actor, if that actor played in multiple movie, all the matched information will be provided as a result of this query. And we, once we have this query result like this, then basically it's the panel data, which we can utilize to analyze more in depth in the other third party application. So, if you want to utilize a third party application, and if you want to utilize this data there, the first way is that you have to prepare the query. And if you have the connector installed correctly, you can actually perform this query directly in the third party application. But if you don't have a connector installed on the third party application, or there is a very difficulty in terms of connecting these two applications, then one way is that you can perform the query here and you can export this result into another file, and you can open it into the third party application. So to do that, basically, uh, one thing you have to notice is that on the top here, when you perform the query, on the middle here, it says a limit to 1,000 rows. So currently, MySQL Workbench is limiting the result to be up to 1,000 rows. But if you have a lot of data, you have to choose a don't limit, so that all the results from your query can be listed as a result. And then if you want to export this result, you can click this export option here. And then you can save the result of this query into CSV file or other like files, basically. And then you can open the CSV file in Microsoft Excel. You can use it to analyze data. That's one way in case you don't have a, a connector installed on your PC. Another way is that simply in my case, uh, I can simply go to the Microsoft Excel. And here, there's a data tab. So this uh, process is already in the slide, so I'll just show you. And there's this get data option. And here, there is a from database option. So here, there is a from MySQL database option. So if you click that, so basically Microsoft Excel already provides multiple options that you can bring uh, data from different databases. So there is also PostgreSQL database and also other things too. So in this case, I can choose from MySQL database. And then I have to put server information and the database information. So here, Basically, you can put something like this. So in this case, uh, server information, basically you are supposed to put IP address of your server in the organization and the port number. But in this case, I simply type localhost 3306. That is uh, uh, my local computer's database information.
and for the database name, I can type Sakira. And I can open advanced option here. I can type the SQL statement so that uh, I want to bring retrieving data from my SQL server based on this SQL query. So I can specify that in this SQL statement section here. And then click OK. And here it asks uh, how uh, I need to connect to the MySQL server using the user account. Uh, here you have to choose the second option, which is database. So if you choose the Windows option, it's only when Windows server is connected to database. So in this case, I choose database option and choose uh, username root and the password and click connect. Mm. Yeah, I don't remember which password I used. Anyway, if you type the correct password, <laughs> it will show the result like this. So I tested this in my Office PC and yeah, actually this should be supposed to be shown. So anyway, so I'll use this. <laughs> so once you type correct credential, so the, basically the result of your query will be shown here. So it's saying that this data will be imported to the third party application, in this case, Microsoft Excel. And if you click load, as you see, the data will be imported. And then here, you can utilize Microsoft Excel to analyze the data. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure whether I forgot the password or I forgot to install a connector. One of those two regions, usually. So if you try by yourself, it will work fine. And the same approach can be used in other third-party applications. So this is an example of Microsoft Power BI, which is uh, basically a business data analytics service based on the interactive visualization. So actually, Microsoft Power BI is very similar to Tableau. And if you are into visualization, and if you have a worked on visualization project in your company, you might be familiar with this tool. If you, it's your first time, or if you have never used this kind of software, I highly recommend to use it. So um, if you are using Windows laptop, then you can actually download the Microsoft Power BI desktop for free from their website. So if you use that, you can make a really nice uh, graph or chart like this very easily by using a few clicks. So that's a very good tool. So uh, I'm not going to go through all this step, but I put it here for your reference. So if you are using Microsoft, uh, if you are using Windows laptop, you can go to this link and you can download it for free and you can install it for free and you can actually try it. So if you are into visualization of data, if you like those kind of things, then I highly recommend this tool to practice yourself. And also, Microsoft Power BI and Tableau is very similar. So if you master one tool, it's actually quite easy to use the other tool too. So I highly recommend this. So for my undergraduate course, actually, I put a lot of focus on visualization because uh, it's kind of a very hot thing these days in the data science area. And here is the information of how you can retrieve data from your Microsoft SQL, uh, MySQL server. So basically the same steps. There is also get data option. You can go there. If you click more, there is a database option. From there, uh, you can see the MySQL database option. And if you choose that, you can add the server address, database name, and the SQL query. By typing this, you can actually retrieve data from SQL server into this application. So same thing. So that's it. And also another thing is that if you are using like a Mac and if you uh, cannot install Microsoft Power BI desktop application, you can use uh, online web service too. If you just type Microsoft Power BI on Google, uh, there will be a link to their website. And if you click just sign in, and if you use your, uh, if you choose the single SSO sign in or something like that, and if you just use your school CHK email address and password, you can actually utilize it too. So if you want to practice, you can use it either way. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I think that's all for this. And another powerful and my uh, another powerful tool and my favorite programming language is, is actually Python. So I use Python for many of my works, uh, for my research and other things. And using Python, you can do actually anything because uh, Python is a general programming language. You can do all different types of things, uh, uh, and anything you can imagine, you can do it in Python. So, if usually people ask me like, uh, what is the programming language you have to learn, then I recommend usually Python. And to install MySQL connector for Python, instead of going to MySQL website, you can simply type this too. You can use Python minus M PIP. So basically PIP is a Python package management software. So you can use that and you can sp specify install and you can specify MySQL connector Python like this. Then Python will automatically install the MySQL connector on your system. And to test whether MySQL connector is installed correctly, you can simply type this code. So you can use import mysql.connector if your connector is installed correctly. And then you can make the variable name mydb. And inside here, you can use mysql.connector.connect function. And here, as a parameter, you can give a host name, which is a local host or IP address of your SQL server, username, and password. And then you can print mydb. Then the connection information will be printed. If that happens, it's connected correctly. So I can test this in my PC. So I already installed the MySQL connector if I remember correctly. And I go here, I simply type this. Oh, let me change this. I have to save it as a pi. So I typed this. Uh, I typed this simple code here to test uh, whether Python can connect to my MySQL server, and then If I test this, okay, there are some. Oh yeah, I have to type the user name, okay. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's about the password, right? So there is some authentication error. So. Uh, Unfortunately, I don't remember my password right now. <laughs> but, yeah, but actually, yeah, as you see, yeah, this should work fine. So the error here, if you look at it, actually, it's connected, but the problem is the authentication. So if you look at, yeah, it's access denied for user, right? So it's just because I don't remember the password. 
So if you use this code, you can check your connection to the Python. And then I prepared some code here for your reference. So this is the insert query code. So what you can do using Python and other programming languages is this. So you can make a web application, or you can make a Windows application, or something like that. And you can get an input from the user. And using that input, you can make a system to insert that input data into the relational database. To do that, you can simply use this. So here is the same, import mysql.connector. So basically, you import the connector into the Python, and then you specify your connection information. So host is your IP address of your server again. User is your username. Password is your password of the user account. And the database, here you can specify the database name you want to uh, work on. So in this case, if I want to add the data into the older system database, I can use uh, this format, basically. And next is basically this. My cursor equal to my db.cursor. Basically, this connection, I'm basically here, I'm specifying that I'm putting my cursor on this database connection. So that's what I'm specifying here. So cursor is basically where I'm located now. So I'm going to work on this my database. So that's what I'm specifying here. And then you specify the SQL statement you want to perform. So SQL statement insert into statement is here. So basically on the customer table, on the customer number and customer name attributes, I'm gonna put two value. So percent %s is a string in the Python. And for percent %s, two values are basically this, 777 and Kion Kim. So basically this value will be matched here. And then next you can execute your SQL query with the value. So my cursor is basically my connection to the SQL server and execute function means that I'm going to perform that SQL query. And here you specify the SQL query you designed. And here you specify value that will be matched into this percent %s. So that's how this code is designed. And after that, if you specify also my DB that commit that this transaction will be fully committed to SQL relational database. And then, yeah, that's it. So I just put the print function here to show that this is performed. So after installing MySQL connector, you can try this at your home. Then if you remember your password correctly, it will work fine. And this is another example of a select query. So after you insert the data, you may want to retrieve the data and you want to work with something and you want to process some procedure in the Python, then you have to retrieve the data. To do that, everything is the same. So we use the connector, you specify the database connection information here, and using the my cursor to specify where you want to connect, and using the, the execute function to perform the SQL. And the SQL I specify here, select every information from customer table. And then you can, uh, so in this case I, but after I execute this query, the results will be returned, and you can use a fetch or or just a fetch each, depending on what you want to do. In this case, I use the fetch or. Fetch or means that the entire result I want to bring it into the Python, and then I put that into my result. So basically, when I perform this query, there will be a list of information, list of the result. So customer one, customer two, customer three. In Python, if you use a fetch or function each result will be uh, saved in the list format. So first, the so customer one's information will be the item number one in the list. Customer two's information will be item number two in the list, like that. So this my result variable will contain a list of each information you retrieve from SQL query. And then in this case, I use the for statement to print out each element in the list, basically each line of the customer information. So you can, if you are not sure what will happen, you can just try. You can try, then basically you will see the same results you will see in my SQL Workbench. So that's a simple example of how you can utilize Python and connect to my SQL server to perform some data retrieval or uh, inserting data. So I put some example here, uh, but this course is not programming course or not the Python course, so I'll stop here so you can use this as a reference. And if you want to know more information about how to utilize MySQL from Python, actually there are very good exercise and very good example on this website. So you can go there, then 
they provide multiple codes. You can just follow them, then you will understand how this works actually in the Python.